Hi everybody, this is Dave Shopius. Um, this is just a little progress report about what I've done so far with my B9 arm. I've done a few improvements, done a little bit of extra wiring, uh, cleaned up some wiring, did some troubleshooting, and I uh, still got a little bit more to go. But um, I basically uh, got things smoothed out and working pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the way they are right now. I think this is going to be my final result. Just to give you a little uh, update here, I'm using the EZB version 4 uh, robot controller platform. Uh, that's the EZB right there from EZ Robots. Um, this is a 12 volt system, and I've got a few uh, step down voltage regulators uh, knocking down uh, 12 volts DC right there. That's my 12 volt DC power supply. It uh, supplies up to 30 amps, <clears throat> and when this thing gets rocking, it can pull up to 30 amps. Uh, but um, that is going to go away. That's just a battery uh, for the um, regenerative power that this Sabertooth motor controller dumps into. Um, this version of Sabertooth, actually, uh, I can put a shunt in there, a power shunt, and get rid of that battery. I uh, won't have to dump it. but. Um, the uh, five feedback and position control is by the, the uh, little uh, kangaroo times two right there. Um, it's, uh, I have uh, some limit switches here wired in. Uh, so when it, when it reaches up and it hits one of those switches, it knows it's been too far. But the kangaroo, you don't really need those, uh, but I decided to get them, put them in there anyway. That is an option. Um, I have um, position feedback by a soft pot potentiometer that's it's a little flat potentiometer that goes back behind here and there's a stylus that's screwed in right right there that pushes up against um, that membrane in there and tells exactly kangaroo that tells kangaroo exactly where it's at um, I was talking about um, knocking power down I've got uh, right now I've got 12 volts going in here from the power supply um, but the thing is my servos only take 7.4 and 6 volts so I've got two separate um, step down um, voltage regulators and they're really cool here's one right here it, uh, it take, it'll handle up to 10 amps it's a little switching power supply power converter rather that uh, will take um, anywhere from 5 to 24 volts and knock it down to uh, I think uh, anywhere from four to nine volts depending on where you set it with some software it uh, is really nice it's lightweight it doesn't heat up um, and it takes a lot of abuse I've got another one inside this wiring box uh, to supply a, this one here supplies six volts to three different servos this one in here I got one strapped in here it supplies 7.4 volts to this servo inside of here and I also have a um, a little motor controller in there that I have wired into this servo that um, takes the place of the built-in uh, circuit board that I took out of there. <laughs> um, that's a digital. That was a digital servo. I hated the whine uh, that it would it would uh, produce when it was sitting idle. It just bugged me. So I got a ultra sonic switching motor controller from Pulu and uh, wired it in place of the, took the old board out and wired it in place of there but um, I, that's in a different uh, video that I shot, I'm not going to go into that anymore I actually did uh, upgrade the uh, servo at the wrist uh, back and forth risk to a 1501MG H, that's H, power HD servo um, I'm really happy with that and I also upgraded the um, claw servo that opens and closes the claws uh, from a sub micro to a micro uh, servo so I upgraded that a little bit gave a little bit more power and it's really smooth so everything else is pretty much the same I've uh, done some more programming uh, with the um, with this kangaroo feedback um, so it runs this is a DC windshield wiper motor I didn't get into that it's powered through the um, saber tooth over there and I worked on the uh, the programs inside the saber tooth 
I'm sorry, inside of the Kangaroo software to give it better feedback and response. So it's nice, everything's nice and smooth now. I'm really happy with it. Um, it's all controlled through uh, the Easy Robot platform, and I, I've got still have pretty um, primitive scripts written, just basic movement scripts, but they're pretty smooth just to kind of test and demo with. And I've been running everything uh, pretty uh, for a pretty long time with no problems. So uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, of a peek here what I can do. Um, I'm going to start up the claws first. Um, and again, it's just uh, open and closed right now, but uh, I can make those go faster or slower or open to any position through the Easy, B Easy Robot software. And like I said, it's just a matter of um, turning them on and off. I've got a script up here that uh, I've got written that I can start up, but you can see it's cycling right there, open and closed. Um, I've got another script here that will run the rest of it. I'm going to stop this right now and kind of let you see what um, what I can do just by itself. The, uh, the claws Okay, that's the wrist up and down. Just, just by hand throughout, it, right, using the controls in the Easy Robot. I can go the uh, the wrist back and forth. So you see, it's pretty responsible, pretty smooth. Or I can just uh, run them with a script like I was doing before. Sometimes I have to reset the servo speeds. There we go. I'm going to start up the other script that runs the the wrist. Two servos and a wrist. So now I've got three servos going. I've got the claw servo, the wrist back and forth, and the wrist up and down. You can hear how quiet it is. You hear that uh, in the background, that's my heater going in the background. Um, I'm going to turn it off. There. Now you can hear, I'm right up close. The claw servo is giving a little bit of a rattle, but everything else is smooth and quiet. That the ultrasonic, ultrasonic switching board I have in here is just, just sweet. It's quiet. It gives it just as much power as they had before, if not more. And it runs really cool. Cool, I mean, no temperature. <laughs> I'm going to shut the claws off right now. Quiet. Dead quiet. Start the claws up again. So now I also have a. Um, that's just the. That's just the wrist and the claws going. I've also got the um, elbows going up and down. Pretty nice. And it's nice and smooth and quiet. You see how quick it is. It's just amazing and strong. The end of that uh, claw is about three pounds by the time you get out to, out to the end of that thing. Anybody that knows anything about robotic arms, um, you should be amazed that this thing is working like this. I was. Um, to, for it to lift that kind of weight, um, it, it's just amazing. And to do it so quickly and smoothly with no heat, the servos are not heating up. Um, this is running cool. This, Like I said, that's a that's a windshield wiper motor that I got from A M E. Um, there's there's uh, absolutely no hesitation. It's very smooth, very quiet.
looking at it from underneath. I'm really happy with this. I think this is my final design. Um, getting back to the software, you can kind of see those three numbers there cycling. Those are the servo positions. When it turns red, I guess does of the 179, that means it's actually turned off and released. Um, there it comes back on and it goes uh, in and out and then it'll shut off in a second because that's a servo that I don't need. Oh, there it goes off. Um, very cool software, very easy to program. I probably program this um, routine in just a matter of minutes. Now, my next step now is to adapt this so it goes in and out of the torso. Anybody who knows anything about the B9 robot knows that these arms suck in and out. Um, and this right here is the elbow joint. I'm going to give you, I can't really give you an idea. You can see the elbow joint is right about there. Sorry about that. So yeah, it's pretty life life size as far as um, these measurements and dimensions and things. Um, from here in out would go into in and out of the torso, and this would stick out of the torso a little bit. And this is the uh, machine. I'm, this is what I'm going to use right here. I've got to adapt this base onto here, and this is going to slide in and out of the torso. And the end of this will be right about, be sticking out basically uh, where the donut's going to retract into. So the, the donut here, inside of that donut, will be right up against here when it's fully retracted. So you can see that it, it slips nice and, nice and uh, smooth. It's made by a company, um, the name escapes me right now. Uh, but anyway, it's, if there's no rollers or nothing, this is all plastics under here. And it's the same uh, bushing, it's made out of these plastics, made out of the same bushing I have inside of this joint here. And, and it's just last, they, they say it'll last for uh, years and years and years where I have to replace it. Uh, even at this speed, I'll never be running the robot like this. But um, if I was to, it would probably last for years if it just ran like this constantly. So these, um, these are little plastic slides you can see in there. Slide in and out. The motor will mount to this and it'll slide up and down this track. I just have to figure out a way to, to move it. <laughs> I, I have some ideas, um, but um, this is my next and last step of getting my arm going here. So anyway, I've, I've chatter, chattered enough here. I hope uh, you guys enjoy this. And um, I'm really proud of this. And I think that uh, anybody could build this with, this with this equipment. And I'd be happy to share any kind of uh, equipment lists or programs that I've, I've made to get it to move this smoothly. And hopefully somebody else can improve on it and do better. So take care and uh, you guys have a nice day. Bye-bye.